This is sort of a post job intro. It's done. The painting's done. And it's, uh, it, it, uh, I don't know how to say this. It looks crappy. I said, I got all done. And like I even said, you hear this later in the video, like, well, it doesn't look very good. It's kind of janky. Uh, and then the next day, uh, I come in here and took the plastic down and turn all the lights on and boy, it looks even worse than it did then. So I hesitated to even do this video. Uh, if like I didn't release it because it really is a comedy of errors of, of the wrong way to, to do this. And so I was, wasn't sure about releasing it, not because I'm embarrassed by it, because I don't really care, but mostly because I didn't want to set you off on a bad path. I think when people watch these YouTube videos, there is at least some expectation that the person that they're watching knows what they're talking about. It gives them a little, you know, kind of exudes some confidence and some, and some expertise. And in this case, I don't have any of that. I have never painted a car before. I have, I have painted one panel of a car years ago with rattle can. It came out okay. It was fine. Um, but I've never used a paint gun on a compressor. I've never done this kind of work, especially not to this level. Like I'm paying half a car. So uh, I was like, we say this learning as I go. I was quite literally learning as I went, making mistakes, trying to correct them. Uh, and in the end, it got all painted and I didn't correct all my mistakes. Some of them that would just couldn't correct them in real time. They're going to have to be corrected afterwards. And I don't have the time or the, or the material to redo it. So, which is probably what I should do, clean everything off and respray it, but I'm not going to, I'm going to fix it. So I'll show you that in a later video, but today I decided, yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and release that video because it's uh, at the very least, you can see what's involved, how hard it really is to do. I have the utmost respect for people who do this for a living and the expertise they have. Uh, it actually really is. It's a weird deal. It's, it's actually quite simple and yet it's really hard. You, you don't just, you know, snap your fingers and become a car painter. So you'll see that. So take all of it with a grain of salt. I say that all the time. I don't really know what I'm doing. A lot of these times, a lot of these videos, when you watch these, what you're watching me do is you're watching me do something for the first time. Now I may have researched it. I've watched some YouTube videos myself about it. I'm not going in totally, you know, totally blind. And that's true here too. Man, this stuff is really hard. But also, it's not impossible. And it's not unfixable. But you can do this, you know. And so you'll see me do it. You'll see me do it wrong. You'll see me try to fix it. You'll see me say some dumb stuff as far as what I think is going on and it's not what's going on. And I'm sure a whole bunch of people will be just itching to comment below to tell me all of the mistakes I'm making in real time. And I actually would appreciate it because this is, you know, it won't be the last car I paint. So I'm hoping to learn a lot from this. And I did learn a lot from this. So nothing else. When you get out of this, you can, you can learn too. So with all that said, um, hope you enjoyed this. And uh, I'll show you how I painted this car, for better or worse. Okay, so I got my gun put together. Uh, sorry, I missed the unboxing part, but I'll give you kind of walk you through what this one is. I'm not suggesting this gun. I just was. <laughs> Something I picked up on Amazon. So it comes with three tips. This is one that was on it. And it is a 1.4 tip. It comes with three other or two other tips. This is 1.7. So this does not say anywhere on the tip. So these go together, right? And you'll want to keep them together because if they get separated, you won't know for sure which tip goes with which uh, and you do want to keep them kind of married together and then this is a one a 2.5 so this would be like for super high build primer I will probably I haven't done spray primer yet yeah this doesn't say anything on it either so definitely if you have a gun like this make sure you're keeping these together I would probably recommend I would recommend for myself anyway having uh, two guns one for primer one for paint not mix them I've heard different mixed uh, opinions on this you should have a gun for primer sealer base clear 
Uh, if you're a pro, that may be true, but for somebody like me who's just gonna once in a while do a small paint job in their garage, I'm just gonna go with one gun. So I'm not doing primer. I already I just did that with a rattle can. So this is my this will be my base clear gun. It came with a pressure regulator, and uh, we'll see how accurate that is. It did not come with the water separator. I bought that separately. This is actually my second one. I broke the other one. When I put all this together. It was it was leaking, and so I got a wrench on this and, and tightened it as much as I could. And when I did, it cracked the, <laughs> the the seam right here, the plastic, and leaked air. It was just like psh, just crazy. So I had to run out and buy another one. One thing I don't like love about it is this. It's nice that it comes with a paint can, but um, it's just a metal can with an air hole in the top. So I don't think you're painting upside down. So it's going to be, you know, you're going to paint come out that hole. This doesn't, it just seals with friction. There's not even like a rubber seal around it. I don't know if that's supposed to be true. At least it come with a can. There's a system that uses like a plastic cup and, and it's like a disposable system. I just don't want to spend the money on it today. And I kind of wish I had, and I probably in the future before I do my next paint job, probably will do that. Next, I'm going to talk about these cups. Uh, these came, the paint store that I got the paint from gave me these, which is kind of nice. So the way these work, this, this particular paint says it's mixed one to one, which I think is rather unusual. Everything I've read or watched YouTube, other YouTube videos on, the, their paint is usually two to one. But regardless, on the top of the, in these cups, these columns here, here's this one to one to 1.5. 1 to 70 percent, 2 to 1, yada yada yada, 3 to 1, 5 to 1, 6 to 1, 8 to 1. Whatever your mixture is supposed to be, so in my case 1 to 1, you use the 1 to 1 column and you can ignore the other, the rest of this. If I go fill to 5 and I'm going using the 1 to 1, I'll do the color, the paint to the 5 line and then my reducer to the other, the next 5 line. So 5 to 5 or 4 to 4, 3 to 3, etc. So these cups make it really, really simple. They look really complicated. <laughs> they look crazy complicated, but but you just focus on the one spot that matters and ignore the rest. Uh, I'm gonna start relatively small and not waste a bunch of paint. So I will go to as I don't have anything to store the paint back in once it's reduced. These don't these didn't come with any lids, so this is just a mix. So I'm gonna start with really really small amounts. So I'm gonna go probably to that five and then five. That's actually a lot. Maybe go three to three. Maybe about half a cup here. And just to get a feel for how this paint's going to lay down. I've never used this paint before. For that matter, I've never used any paint before. One of the things I was reading about is you want to make sure that your air is all the way out. So you get the max airflow. Let your regulator do the regulating. So this is your fluid control. And I watched this guy on YouTube, and this is what he said. He said, pull the handle all the way back. Back this... It's just kind of a two nut system. Back this all the way out, pull this trigger all the way back and then thread this back in until it stops. Boy, that's hard to thread. Granted, my hands don't work very good right now, but still, it isn't as smooth as I have seen some guys do. Okay, there we go. Let me change hands and make sure because one hand seems to be stronger than the other. Okay, so that, pull that trigger back, butt that up against it and that's your flow, that's your full flow and then lock it in. And then this is your fan control. So that controls the, the fan type. I don't know if it's left or right. It looks like it's got a little bit of a guide on here. Kind of implies that counterclockwise opens the fan up. So I'm gonna go wide open. Although I wonder for the edges if I should shrink the fan down a little bit so I'm not getting quite as much overspray. I'll play around with that a little bit. I'm probably gonna replace this cup, but we'll start with it today as is. And um, anyway, so that's the gun. But as always, I'll put everything that I use here, um, at least that I can, that's available online. I'll put links to it. Some of the stuff was local. So like the paint, there's another place I'll, I'll link to them. I use them, I've used them an online place for some previous paint and they'll give you different options. Like they'll give you quarts, gallons, they'll, they'll pre-mix it. So that's already reduced, ready to spray. They'll even put it in a rattle can if you want to use, the, if you don't have a paint sprayer. And I've used them for some touch-up stuff before, and they're really good. Their color matching is really good. I'll put a link to them. I don't get any kickback from them. Use them, don't use them. Find somebody local, whatever you want to do.
I like finding local shops, so support a local business. Uh, open a door and get a fan going so I can vent out some of these fumes. We'll get the edges painted. Oh, that's pretty. I don't know how to do this without making a mess. So I've got some stuff down here. We'll fill up to our line here. So this is going well. Tip number one for my mistakes, don't pour over the label because it takes all the ink off the label. <laughs> pour over like the warning label on the back that tells you not to swallow it because everybody knows that. So we're off to a swimmingly good start here. And we'll get a reducer. This is a slow reducer because it's gonna get warm in here. And that way it doesn't, doesn't flash too fast on me. I've got it to Well, so it's actually the three line, but as I tip this up to show you, it was sloshing and painting the side of the cup, and now it looks like it's to five, but it's not. It's only to three. So I'm going to fill to this other three line right here with a reducer. I'm going to try to anyway. How do you pour this stuff? It's ridiculous. Well, that's better. Okay. Good grief. That was surprisingly difficult. Actually, that's not surprising at all. I make everything difficult. Get a good table or, or a workspace. This is wobbly as all get out. Get a good stir stick too, because this isn't one. The nice thing about this particular stand is you can spin this around, I'll put a strainer in. We'll strain any particles or dust that might have gotten in here, or the cup was dusty, maybe just sitting out here in the open. All right, we're gonna wipe down these panels one last time. Make sure we get all the dust. This is not gonna be a dust-free paint job, right? It's in a garage with fans and windows and clean the floor best I could, but you know, this is not a paint shop. It's a workshop. So tack all the parts. Now I'll end up doing this multiple times because it's, like I said, it's gonna get dusty after I paint these edges and then get it remounted. I'm going to want to do this again because it's just going to get dusty again. It's like everything else in here. I'll degrease them real quick here. This is uh, instance number 104, I think, somewhere in that range of things I've said in previous videos that I wish I had and then I should get and then I don't get them and still wish I had them. That's a long title. Spray bottle, spray, pump sprayer, hand sprayer, pump hand sprayer. Instead of wiping this degreaser on this wax remover, on with uh, a rag you can just spray it and then just wipe it off with the rag let it flash off I said this like I don't know a month ago I wish I had one of those little sprayers and they're like 15 bucks they're not like they're that expensive so this gets all that last bit of grime coating fingerprints stuff like that off stuff that's gonna get in the way of paint adhesion This is, this is again, this is that case where I wish I had that sprayer. Okay. Here goes nothing. See, it's already leaking out the top. I hate this can. Um, I don't really know what, uh, where am I at? About 15, about 20 PSI. That's probably too much. Let me turn that down a little bit. So I'm just gonna spray on the plastic here. Okay, let's turn the pressure up just a little. Because when you pull the trigger, you lose some pressure.
Okay, so first coat of on the edges is down. A couple things already that I've learned in this process. One, I'm going too fast. I'm, I'm used to spraying with rattle cans where you'll get a bunch of drips because paint comes out in a much higher volume than it does in this atomized spray. So you need to move, I need to move some smooth, but a little slower. I'm just, I'm kind of way too fast. And so it's spraying kind of um, faintly. It's over atomized. I'm not sure what the right term is, but it's not laying on smooth. It's laying on kind of, kind of faint. So I'm having to go back over it a couple times. Um, second thing is I'm not keeping enough overlap. So I did the whole hood um, just to get a base. Just uh, Well, here's why I did the hood. Uh, I was worried about the color. If you recall in the last video, if you watched that one where I did the taillight, I had some sort of revelations or some potential revelations about the paint and that it's been resprayed and I wasn't sure if it was the exact right color. It wasn't the factory paint job. So who knows? Who knows what the previous people did? I'm assuming somebody followed the paint code, but there's no guarantee. They could have just bought cheap, bright red paint from whatever, O'Reilly's. So, so I wanted to paint the hood and just see what it looked like. And it's a pretty close match. Um, obviously there's some paint fade and I did sand that, so it's a little faded anyway, but uh, it's pretty close. Well, since really the hood isn't going to hit anything that's not gonna get painted or blended, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the hood. And in fact, I think I'm gonna finish the bumper while I'm at it. Uh, part of the reason I wanna finish the bumper is, or at least the bottom, that's what I'll do. I'm gonna finish the bottom of the bumper because that, that doesn't work very well upside down. It's just gravity fed. So when you turn that can, if, you don't, if you're starting to run out of paint as I was getting to the end there, uh, it, it, you, know, you turn and it's sucking air, not paint. And so trying to paint underneath the car is gonna be a challenge. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint at least the bottom part. And then this part, same story, trying to get down into here, I'm gonna tip it. So that'll be easier to paint with it set on the car. So I'm painting horizontally and then, paint, and then do the top as well. So I'll do my final coat with that. And I'll, t I'll just top coat everything with one last base coat and we'll, we'll do all the clear on the car. Oh yeah, that's the other thing I learned. This paint doesn't go as far as I thought it did. When I said I only want to use a little bit, I went to that three line. I don't know if that's three ounces, I don't know what that probably. And uh, it's about gone. I mean, by the time I was getting to the end trying to spray, it was, I was running out of paint. So it was starting to get spitty. Uh, I don't know if that's a word, but so I need to mix some more paint and you can get another coat on. And hopefully don't die of heat exhaustion or paint fumes. It's spraying really thin, and maybe it's supposed to, but on the hood where those primer spots were, it's not covering it very well. And uh, I don't know if it's that I'm not, I'm still moving too fast, or maybe it just needs three coats or, or more. Let's uh, give this another five or so minutes to flash, and we'll hit her again. But I think the fender I'm gonna call good with two coats. It's, easier, it's just to make sure that when you look between those cracks, or when you look on this side of the inside of the hood, it's not going to be burgundy. You know, it's not a great paint job inside the engine compartment, so it doesn't have to be great here. So I think I'm good with that. And uh, if I get it on the car and it doesn't look quite right, then I can touch it up. These are the headlight covers. Um, Color-wise, I'm okay with them. This one was already the original red. I just was top coating that. This was the burgundy one. And I can see some fish eyes where the burgundy showing through. So again, it probably too thin or too slow. Probably too thin. See, I don't know about the reducing. It seems awfully watery. What's the consistency supposed to be, guys? Like, like thick water? Or is it supposed to be kind of like paint? <laughs> so I may hit this one other coat because again, I can kind of start to see a little dark through. But I'm also going to do it when it's on the car. 
with that final coat or two. So I might hold off, although I've just mixed up some paint and don't want to waste it. This I'm going to call good. This top edge here will get touched up and finished up when we get it on the car. The edges though, I think are good enough, just like the fender. It's just where you can see through, like where this meets up the bumper or meets up the fender. So I think the only thing I'm going to focus on now is this hood. The hood looks pretty good overall, but again, there's a spot here but I can see a lot of the scratches, a lot of the sanding scratches. I'm hoping those will kind of disappear with clear, but there's a couple spots. I'm getting the right light too. Um, one here, this back here, um, that corner where I had to repair and prime. There's another spot right here. And it just drips sweat into, that's awesome. How's this look over here? So this, this corner was all primed and that looks all right. You know, this could be a, this is a bit of a transition point when I was coming from the other side because I didn't have, I couldn't reach far enough. So, um, that may be part of it. I may have missed, didn't get enough overlap there. So I'm going to give this another good thick coat here in a minute. Let this flash a little longer because um, this was, this was the last thing I did. So, and then I can wipe that sweat, hopefully, the sweat drip off before I paint over it. These rubber gloves, they just, my hands sweat inside and just drips out the bottom of the glove. Third coat did do much better coverage. I also went, if you saw, it went real slow, overlapped a lot. So uh, that made a huge difference. So that was an issue. I was going way too fast and not overlapping enough because that had much better coverage, that third coat. Now it is the third coat. So, you know, it's going to have better coverage, right? Because it's not covering the whole thing. It's only covering up what was showing through coats one and two. Uh, I'm going to call that done for now, at least until I get it back on the car. So I'm going to let that dry probably, I don't know. I'm going to check it in a couple hours. It's super hot today and it might dry real fast. But it's an issue of is it going to dry enough to, to handle. I already see I missed some edges here. I got a little bit careless and missed, an ed missed the edge here. Same thing on the other side where the headlight cutout is. I didn't get that good enough, so I'll have to make sure to get that. And um, but cans out of paint, I don't want to mix anymore just to do a tiny little bit. So I'll do that later. Probably the same thing is going to be true on all the edges. I just didn't get the edges good enough. I did end up doing the whole bumper or most of what I could because I had the paint. I still couldn't get inside those holes, those cutouts here. Very good. Uh, so that's still a lot of gray in there. A lot of gray in there. I don't want to get too close because I keep dripping sweat all over the place. So they'll do that once I get it on the car. I've finished the second coat on the bottom. That looks really good. This is just the first coat. But again, I did the same you know, learning from the hood. 
real slow, lots of overlap, and that covered much better. This is probably only going to need this is this this front or this yeah front top whatever is only one coat. I can see a little gray coming through, but I think it might only need a second coat, not a third coat. Um, but we'll see once we get it on the car, get it laid flat where the light shining right on it might give us a different story. Uh, same story here. This needs another coat. This looks good. And then I haven't done anything with the fender other than the edges. We'll get through that once it's on the car. We'll let this dry for probably, I don't know, I'm going to go, I'm just going to walk away from it and <laughs> leave it for a couple hours. And uh, we'll come back and see how dry it is and whether or not I can move it. You can see there's a definite, like there's three different colors here. I don't know, well, this I'm sure you can see. This has still got some the gray showing through. In fact, there's a big gray spot right there. Um, so the primer is still coming through and this is going to look kind of dark right now. So this is going to need another coat, which is fine. This is the original color of the car. And then this is the new color on the hood. A little bit of blending here. This is a little bit different shade of red. So it's not an exact match, but I think once we get, uh, I'll get this scuffed up and then get another coat on the bumper and then start blending these two together. Um, the paint is a little bit rough. I didn't, I'm getting too much paint drop, I think, from overspray. There's not enough ventilation in here to suck out the, the paint that's in the air. So it might need a little bit of a really, really light wet sand before I clear coat it. But we'll see once we get this done. This is the next day. We've got this put back together late yesterday. Ran out of time to finish up. So hopefully I don't run into too many issues with the paint sitting overnight and putting another coat on this morning. Um, I just, I just uh, scuffed this up and just getting tacked down. You know, I sat in this garage and this isn't a super clean garage. So I'm gonna retack everything because it will have gotten dusty overnight. And we'll do another degrease wipe down as well because we handled it quite a bit last night when it was hot and humid in here and like there's some big fingerprints right there and right there. Okay, so we got another coat on. It was less awesome than before. I got some dust up here. Uh, I didn't get very good coverage here, the top of the bumper. And I ran out of paint on the in the cup on the fender, so I had to stop and refill. And that refill is the end of my paint. So fingers crossed we get to finish this up. I got some streaks up here because I just did not overlap good enough. So you know, so this is the beginner work. So I'm gonna touch up the hood. I have to make sure I get the fender coated, that's first. The bumper I think is okay other than this spot where I got dirt in it, which sucks big time. And then I missed a spot here on the blend with a fender. This is original paint right here in this corner. I just didn't get it very good. So I got a little bit of touch up to do. But it's coming along, you know, I guess for my first paint job, it ain't too bad. First paint job in a garage, a dirty, dusty, hot, humid garage. So we'll give this another five or seven minutes to flash. And a little bit more blending to do on the bumper. And that other fender on the passenger side. And I'm almost out of paint, which is disconcerting. For now, I gotta get some more paint on. This might be it. Because there ain't much paint left in that cup. Okay, well, I am uh, officially out of paint. So, whatever it is, whatever it be, it will be. I was able to get another coat on the fender over here. 
it's still a little bit but i feel like i'll get that out in the sun you're gonna see right through that i don't know if i'm gonna like that um it's gonna be it's kind of blotchy you can see some of the dark color through at least i can i was able to get some onto the door to get some blending in and i uh, touched up the bumper and then that was it i was out i don't know i might just have to be happy with the way it is and move on uh it's it's certainly good enough from 10 15 feet away and that is really what i was going for i just wanted it to look good from it from some you know across the parking lot driving down the road so that i think i've done so we'll let this dry and I'm going to try to sand this, I think, before with some really, really, really light sandpaper, try to smooth some of this out, some of the blotchiness. Of course, I'd pick a very windy day and um, before I clear it. And then hopefully later this afternoon, we're going to get clear on. Man, it's hot in here. It's been a few, uh, about two hours. And I think I'm going to try to wet sand this. It's real rough. I went over it with a tack rag. It was a tack rag was really dusty. So there's a lot of just kind of general overspray, like dust. The, the paint kicks up in the air and then it settles back down. And so it's getting, it's super orange peely. I don't know if that shows up on camera, but I'm going to see if I can smooth that out. And, but be very careful because I'm out of paint. So I can't touch up paint if I screw it up. I'm starting with 1,000. I actually think, just to be safe, I know you go, you know, go low and then work your way up. I'm actually going to go up high. I'm going to go 2,000. I'm a little bit less of a risk of overdoing it. Maybe a little more. I'll do the bumper first. Let's do the, no, let's do the hood because I know the hood's got a lot more paint on it. Kind of a, almost a wipe down. Just see if I can smooth out these blotchy lines and some of this orange peel. When I did that polishing video last time, I was doing with uh, soapy water. When I was doing that, when I was doing that wet sand, I was doing it with soapy water because I like the soap with a little bit extra lubricant on the clear, but because it easily washes off the clear coat. So in this case, I'm not, I'm just gonna use regular water. I just don't know for sure what that soap reaction would be to this fresh paint. So I'm just trying to be careful. Yeah, it's definitely rough. That's not really smoothing out very much. So, it's probably not aggressive enough paper right now for where I'm at. So, I'm going to step down to the thousand. It's hard to put paint back on when you don't have any paint. So I figure better to not take enough paint off. And then it takes a little longer. Okay, yeah, so that's getting, you can kind of see where it's getting the high spots. Smoothing out, it's still pretty orange peely, but not as bad. So that is working, so the thousand definitely. I may even go down to 800. Uh, you know, it's gonna, it starts to get, this looks almost glossy. And this starts to fade it out, like get real dull. And I know there's a tendency, you're like, oh no, I'm ruining the finish. But the clear coat's actually what's going to give you your shine, not the paint. So not that big a deal. Don't, get, don't fret too much about it. At least I'm not going to fret too much about it. And you cannot use too much water. So... You don't want this to stick. I saw earlier when it got stuck on there and I had to kind of peel it off. I did not have enough water. So if you feel like you have enough water, put a little more on because you might not have enough water just yet. The water won't hurt anything. So don't get stingy with the water.
not pushing very hard. You know, like I'm just kind of letting the sandpaper do the work, which is a slow process. There's a, I feel a, a, a Jones in to push harder <laughs> and get this over with. But if I just got to do it three times as long and to versus risk over sanding, well, I'll just go slow. I think that's better. There we go. Yep, looks good. And you can kind of hear it too. Like when you're sanding, you can hear like you're sanding over some rough, I say rough, like just uneven. It's, it's nubby, like it's bumpy. And the more you sand, the, the, that's, you can tell by that sound, that nubbiness starts to quiet down. Careful on these edges too, you'll never get as much paint on the edge. And now you can definitely burn through. So I think what I'm looking for, and I'm not quite there yet. So when I'm sanding this, now that it looks kind of rough, it has kind of a blotchy look to it. So the high spots have been sanded down or are being sanded down and they kind of fade out or dull. And the slightly shinier bits are the paint that I haven't got to yet, that's still down there. And I think what I want to get to is where it's a nice, smooth, dull finish. Hi. Good. It's red. It's red. Are you happy with it? I'm not unhappy with it. That's good. I'll take that. It's not a great paint job, but it's not bad considering who did it. <laughs> All the rest of the car has got a decent amount of orange peel to it. Because that's just how factory paint jobs were in the 90s. And if they did repaint it, probably a cheap paint job on that too. And so I don't have to get rid of all the orange peel. I just, it was like rough. How's your back? It's pretty sore. Yeah, it's not happy. Let's fire up a hot tub. <laughs> yeah. A cold tub, maybe. That would probably be helpful. <laughs> Ice bath. I don't want one, but they probably help. So, yeah. later. Well, I think I got it about as smooth as I'm gonna get it. I wiped it down, and um, then in a little bit here, half hour or so after this is dry, we'll start with clear. We'll see how it goes. At least it's all one color. <laughs> I'm tired of this whole gravity fed thing and paint spilling all over. So I went ahead and upgraded my paint cup. It's a cup, it's a different cup. It's got its own uh, measuring system on the side, similar to the, to these mixing cups, right? But you don't have to pour it out into a different system. You can just do it right inside here. There's a liner. So you get one cup and then you get a bunch of liners. This came with, I think five in this kit, this basic kit. You can get replacement liners. And then you mix your paint or, or your clear coat, whatever, right in here. And then the lid has the filter screen already on it. So you don't have to screen the paint first. You certainly can, but you don't have to. This clips together, clips to the liner, not to the cup. So the, this just holds it all in there. So what happens is as you spray, it sucks the air out of here. And then this is that little liner vacuums in and so all you ever spray is paint there's no air in it anymore so once you get the air out so you can paint upside down on an angle it doesn't spill you never lose pressure if you have a gun like mine 
there's different guns that have different attachments, but this gun where the can threads on, you need an adapter. I guess there's some guns where you don't, so I had to pick this up as well, because this screws onto the gun, and then this clips onto that adapter, and you're good to go. Uh, this has been super helpful, and uh, I should have bought it up at the beginning instead of trying to save a few bucks. So I definitely recommend some kind of cup system. There's all kinds of different ones and all kinds of different price points. Uh, I don't know enough about them to know all the differences between them. I'm sure there's like, you know, build quality and how much you get and how big the cups are. It's not a super big cup. I'll, I'll put a link to this one, but um, I'm sure there's different quality. So, you know, do your research on that. But this was pretty cheap and huge, huge saver for me. We're gonna mix up our clear with this cup system. It actually has the measurements on it, so I don't need the mixing cups. I'm gonna get this out. This is our hardener. This is our finish coat. This mix is four to one. Pretty instructions on the side. And eight to 10 PSI. So I'm gonna turn the pressure down a little bit. You know, I, I got a gallon. I don't know if I'm gonna need a gallon, but I only got a quart of paint. And that was barely enough. So I figured I can always save it for at least some period of time. So in these cups, it is use a four to one. And so we're gonna go to the four and then to the next four. So it's four, one, one. So if you had three parts, you go four, four, four. We're just gonna go the first four, second four. For you painter guys, you guys are experienced guys, is there a trick to pouring this stuff? Because I'm definitely struggling. Is there some attachment, a funnel, just a better can? I'm curious. Okay, now take a hardener and fill that to the next line. And I still don't have any stupid stir sticks. Good grief, Ryan. All this time. Ample opportunity to get a good, decent stir stick. Can I make one out of something? I will use a handle of a chip brush, cheap chip brush. And these lids just click on, and this one threads on. Now that's open on top, so don't just go tipping it over. So I get the gun, kind of push it down on the top. Till these little, little feet click around that adapter fitting. And then we should be good to go. I'm using the same tip, the 1.4. And again, it's been sitting here for a while, so I'm going to tack it again before I start spraying. Okay, there goes nothing. There's a ton of air bubbles in that. Still have too much air or not enough air. It's a little better. Turn the pressure up a little bit. That bumper laid down much nicer. That hood looks like garbage. Well, I have a lot of sanding and polishing in my future, I can see.
lovely. Okay, well, the hood did not lay down very good. Bumper was a little better. The fender was all right. Bye. I always say, everybody's always told me, the first layer of clear is gonna look like crap. It's okay, let it go. Second coat will make it better. I hope they're right, because the first <laughs> coat looks like crap. Can't fix it now, let it go. I'll put another coat on after this flashes. We just may have a lot of sanding and finishing work to do to clean it up. I mean, a lot of, there's runs everywhere. Yeah, it was way too thick, way too thick. He's up there, Ryan. All right, well, this is two coats. It's been drying for, I don't know, an hour or so, a couple hours maybe. And it's pretty janky. It probably looks halfway decent on camera, but it's a ton of fish eyes and orange peel. It's going to be a lot of wet sanding and polish. So we still have a lot of work to do, but it's at least all one color and it's got a finish on it. We'll say that. I've untaped it, just kind of see how it looks. This side looks pretty good. I was worried about this side. It's got a huge run right here, <laughs> like this big globby run that I'll have to take care of. It's pretty close. Like I said, from, from a distance, I think it's going to look pretty good. The question is going to be, What's it gonna look like when we get it out in the sun? I'm a little bit worried about that. It is what it is. It's my first time, my first big project like this. I don't think it's that bad, given that, with a lot of, with some practice. Probably some better equipment. You know, this was a cheap gun. As, as I get down the road here and, and get more practice at this, I will, I'm certainly will upgrade the gun. Uh, that gun was relatively cheap, and I think I would certainly recommend it as a good starter gun. There are certainly better guns out there. There's even better budget guns out there. I'll put a link to the one I was going to get, but I was really just trying to save a few bucks, and I kind of wish I had bought the other one. This one was like $35. It was really cheap. The other one was something like 60 or 70 still under 100 bucks. And um, I kind of wish I bought the other one, but for just getting started for the first time, this one was pretty good. Uh, I definitely would recommend those that cup system not the gravity fed cup that was terrible uh, and i know that's for a lot of folks out there that's pretty obvious but for a beginner like me i didn't know any better i'll put a link down to everything i used here so i'll say for the 117th time i don't really know what i'm doing i'm just learning so don't take anything i did here as a how-to to paint your car I'm not sure I did much of this correctly. Sometimes this works out in spite of it. And I think that's kind of how this is here. It looks pretty decent in spite of the fact that I probably made a, a, you know, a truckload of mistakes. If you have any advice for me going forward, I'd appreciate some constructive feedback. That's always helpful. Uh, always like to learn. In the end, this was a couple days on again, off again, about seven shirts from all the heat and humidity in here. You know, if you've got a project you need to tackle, just tackle it. Because the crappy gun and it's cheap Amazon clear coat and uh, first time spraying and I'm 80% of the way there. Now the other 20% is going to be a lot of work. And that's one of the big differences I think between uh, an amateur beginner painter like me and a pro is they can get this paint to look like I'm hopefully going to get it to look after I do a whole bunch more work just by spraying. But... In this environment, I got bugs, I got dust, I got, I tried to clean this up the best I could, but you know, I couldn't get it totally clean. Uh, and then I got to open the door and vent this out and um, bugs fly in. So I'll figure out a different system for ventilation, probably something, use something with a garage door and some fans. But maybe you got something out of this and if, maybe you got a little confidence out of this that, you know, you can be a beginner and you can do this on a budget. I, th I think I'm probably total, I haven't added it all up. It was $180, $182 for the quart of paint. That was probably the biggest expense. The clear coat was $100. Uh, the gun was $40. The, the cup system was like another $30. You know, I already had a respirator. I already had towels. Uh, the gun cleaner was another $10. So 
So, I mean, I'm probably, let's say $400 into this for primer, paint, clear coat, sanding, you know, maybe 500, you know, 500 bucks. That's not bad. And then, and a, and a, you know, a whole pile of elbow grease. We'll come back and do, let this cure for a while. We'll come back and do wet sand and polish on this new clear coat and get this smoothed out. We gotta put this all back together, put the headlight stuff back on, all the trim pieces, all the underbody trim. So we're getting close, then we'll do fluids and you know, get it all ready for the road. So we'll see you next time.